Hey guys, how's it going? So I wanted to read something in an article and it's talking about what's going on in China and it says, and people are being locked in their homes for days on end in four cities, Wenzhou, Hanzhou, I can't pronounce it, sorry. Um, so there, people are, so do you hear the key thing? People are being locked up in their homes. So what does this mean? Has anybody ever experienced cabin fever and how severe it can get? Now, people, they can experience cabin fever staying in their home for three days. Just imagine staying in a home for three months. Well, you know, people have been locked in their homes for quite some time in China, certain parts of it. So it's just like they're people are preparing like for food, water, you know, sanitizer, all all, all that, but they're not talking about the emotional, um, and psychological preparation. So you know, human beings were used to socially interacting with people on a daily basis. So even if you're a person that does not have any friends, let's say you move into a new city and you're not really connecting with people on a deep level and, you know, you do feel lonely because you're just like, oh, I have to meet new friends now. And, you know, you, you experience um, a mild form of depression maybe. Now, but the thing is we don't think about what it would be like to completely be isolated, to be locked in, you know, locked in a house, not being able to, you know, go anywhere, like not being able to go to the grocery store and not being able to interact with people because then there's like this hysteria, like, oh my gosh, do they have the coronavirus? Like, you know what I mean? Um... There, if people are not prepared emotionally and mentally as far as how to handle isolation, it's, it's difficult. So I wanted to, um, but they're not talking about that on the news. See, that's the, that's the part that is, is terrifying because these people, when they're being locked in their house, they don't know what's going to happen. You know, they don't know if there's going to be a shortage of food or if there's going to be a, an apocalyptic kind of thing. See, the more that, you know, someone is in isolation, if they're not doing the steps to overcome it, you know, um, then the, the mind can do a lot of snowballing effect to where it starts to really, you know, move rapidly and start asking, like, you know, questions that are terrifying. Like, what's going to happen? Is it going to be the end of the world? And what's going to happen? And, and, and that can be, that can be scary. That's not a good place to be mentally. And, uh, but it's happening, you know, in China, uh, there's people that are freaking out being in their house, but a lot of it has to do with, um, not adapting to isolation. So, um, I think that the way to definitely overcome it would to listen to somebody that has experienced isolation in his past. And he's not experiencing isolation now, but he has experienced it. And he had to do things to make sure that it, the isolation symptoms did not succumb. So, you know, he worked out, he read books, he had a routine every single day and he stuck to that routine and he realized like how important it was to have that routine. Um, so yeah, I'm going to share a link to Kai's video because I want it to be able to really help somebody out there. If we do experience here in America, what's going on in China as far as like lockdowns, I, I really do foresee that happening here in America. It's not anything to be afraid of. People can still enjoy themselves as far as like working on their goals. You know, just saying, okay, I'm going to work out. And I'm going to do this and this and this. And then they could talk to their family and just every day talk to their family on the phone. You know, maybe they're, they're not, you know, maybe they're not with their family in the same, 
you know, space, but they can do what they can. But then if there's like something like with the internet here, you know, which happened in, you know, what happened in China where there's a lot of like censorship and things like that, then it's good to still be able to not allow the fear um, of the unknown to overcome somebody. You know what I mean? Uh, but it can happen. Because the thing is, like, it, it can happen if people are not doing what they need to do to, per, you know, ha to work it through it. Okay? Um, so, yeah, I mean, and then think about it, too. This is what's going to be happening, too. I mean, well, it's happening in China. People are watching the news. You know, what else? I mean, so if, if somebody's not prepared... And, and to think like, okay, I need to, you know, to work out. I need to play my guitar for two hours. I need to do this and that. What are they doing? They're sitting in front of the television. And they're they're trying to get the inside information of what's going on. And they're hearing like, oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. And, oh, these people went to Christmas Island, you know. And, oh, there's, um you know, intern camps. And there's this. And it's getting really bad. And it's a pandemic. And da, 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 da. And the news is repeating itself over and over and over. And there are people that are literally sitting and their their eyes are glued to the TV and they're having cabin fever and they don't know what the hell is going on. It's a complete unknown. And the fear is becoming so much that people have a very huge chance to lose their mind. Fear does that. Fear can make somebody just lose their mind. You know, where they're just like, uh, and just like have a nervous breakdown or just go crazy and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's a very real thing and it can happen. But the factors and all the things, like all the formula of all the things that are, you know, that happen in China, it, it can create that here as far as like, you know, like fear succumbing and just like torture as far as like emotional and mental torture. But as long as somebody is doing things to fill in their time and in, in, in having like those endorphin, you know, th um, things where it's like a checklist, like I worked out and you can feel good about yourself and say, wow, like I accomplished something. I worked out today. Yes. You know, I played my guitar for two hours. Yes. You know, I, um, I colored. Yes. But it's important to keep a routine, you know, um, where it's like every day. You know, because then it, it it tricks the brain, you know, not tricks the brain, but it's like you feel a sense of accomplishment, which is happy and it's peace. And so it replaces the fear. It replaces all those things. But, you know, just the, the reality is the fear, it is a snowball that is ready to get very big, you know, but it can be stopped. And it can be melted. And the only way to do that is a routine. It's not funny. It's not funny. It's a real thing. This is like a serious thing. If anything else, this is the thing. And especially because they're not talking about it. They're they're talking about, you know, people got the food. They got the toilet paper. Yes, we know. Every, people are trying to stock up on toilet paper and make forts in their house. Okay. But they're not talking about the isolation effects because the thing is, like, human beings, we are social creatures. We are used to socializing, but we don't think about it. You know, people fall into depression because they don't have um, connections with people on a deep level. They feel loneliness, and they still have the effects of isolation. They, they still, uh, you know, feel it. But it's not to the next level where... <clears throat> You take away the basic interactions where it's not even on the deep level. It's just the simple stuff like, hi, how are you doing? Thank you for delivering my pizza. Hey, you have a good day. Or, you know, go into the store and you, you know, you're rung up and you say, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Oh, I got a coupon for that. That stuff, there are people that have suffered in isolation and they crave that like no other. I want to just talk to somebody. I want, if, you know, and, and like literally if they saw somebody, they'd be like, hey, 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 notice me, notice me. I'm here. I'm here. I'm alive. Like, can you, do you know? You know what I mean? So, so severe isolation, 
without a plan, it, it gets to that place. You know, but then get what happens then? So then if somebody is going through severe isolation and they start to crave that human interaction, what are they going to do? Well, they're going to go outside and they're going to find themselves in the city or whatever. And then they're going to, they could be susceptible to whatever, you know, whatever is out there. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not fear mongering, but I'm just saying, okay, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if the internment camps and all that stuff is like, but if that was even real, the only time it gets, you know, it, it, it gets where it's not safe is if someone's going out and about like in the middle of the city, you know, um, and looks lost and they don't have a home. They don't have a place to stay. Then they could be like, oh, well, we'll give you a place to stay. So that's, that's the danger. You know, um, so then, yeah, but if, if people know how to handle themselves, like in the isolation state, they're not going to wonder, they're not going to go out there craving for human interaction. But see, here's the thing though. There are a lot of people that don't have community. There are a lot of people that don't have social network out there. There's a lot of people that maybe they're a college student. Maybe they moved into a new town and they still haven't had that interaction. But even if they have friends, who's to say that they're going to be able to huddle up with their friends if everybody's quarantined and they're just like stay, you know, they're staying in their house and they're like everybody's on house arrest or whatever like that. Even if they have that, you know, friend connection, they're, they may not be staying with their friends because their friends may be staying with their family. So then there's people that are literally staying by themselves in their home and all they know is what the news is telling them. And that's terrifying. You know? Um, okay, guys, let me just put this out there. I don't think it's the end of the world. I do think that this is a real thing. I think that people can still enjoy the experience as far as accomplishing their goals, whatever it is. If you want to be a really good piano player, use that time to play the piano. But it is, again, it's very easy whenever someone falls into depression or they fall into fear, even though those things are around and you have a piano, you may have a guitar, you have the tools to make yourself happy, but if someone's falling into, into severe depression and fear, it emo it makes the body to where you can't even move. You're just sitting there like, I don't know what to do. And you just want to go to sleep, you know? And then you're like, I don't know. I guess I'll just watch the news again. And then you just go to the news and you sit there and glue, you know, your eyes are glued. And then they're telling you, oh yeah, this is really bad. It's going to affect everything. The stock market, you know, the stock market, it's crashing. And then all of a sudden your mind is just like, it's snowballing and it's just like, it, it's people are, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if people are having nervous breakdowns because they're not used to severe isolation. They're not used to that. You know, we communicate on a daily basis out here in, in the world. I mean, if you order pizza, you had an interaction. <laughs> if you're on the bus, you, you still, you may have had an interaction, you know, past the the robot people that are just glued to their freaking cell phone. Sorry, I can't stand those people. <laughs> Even though, yeah, myself, I've been glued to my cell phone. But it's just, I, it, it is um <clears throat> Sorry, guys. It is an isolating feeling, you know, where it's like you see people on their, on their iPhone and you're just like, and, and you're like, if I said something, would anybody even hear? Like, I've, I've experienced that before, you know. Um... <clears throat> And it's very saddening, you know, because you're, you're like, yeah, like people are so consumed with their iPhone that they wouldn't even hear me. And there's been times where I've like said something to somebody j just to see like if they would even like, you know, raise their head and look at another human being. And they look like they literally came out of a trance. I'm like, hey, how are you doing? what and they just like look like what uh, and they come out of the slumber of the trance and like oh yeah and, and then like <laughs> I don't know sometimes I just love to interact with people you know and 
you know, here in Utah, it's very isolating sometimes because I don't connect with people on a deep level because I feel like people, they have, um, it's like they do things for everything for religion and sometimes it's not for just for a, you know, for a genuine reason, you know, it's more just to like, because they have to, you know, prove themselves or, I don't know, it's just like a lot of extra stuff. <laughs> so I have a hard time, you know, um, here in Utah. Um, it wasn't like that in Texas. Like, I met friends and it, it was a lot more natural for me because there's that, you know, of course, the Southern hospitality. And people, they like to talk. You know, like, anywhere I would walk, like, there would be somebody, and I didn't know them whatsoever, and they would say hi. They'd be like, hey, how are you doing? And they'd smile, and I'd be like, oh, my gosh, that brightened my day. It's the little things. <laughs> it is the little things that can totally, you know, save somebody. You know, like, if someone was going through severe depression, and it just, like, you know, they feel like they're in a black hole, and they're like, I haven't talked to somebody, like, in, in weeks or whatever like that. You know, because maybe they just, you know, they, they fell into depression. They ended up accidentally isolating themselves or whatever. And then they just are walking and then somebody says hi that doesn't know them. It can literally save them. You know what I mean? But yeah, it's just what we forget, guys. We just forget. Like, you know. So right now, we're able to talk to people. Right now. Um, but... This could be an exciting time as far as working on goals. This could be something to really get people to maybe work on something that they would have never worked on, you know, being in their house and not going outside and, you know, going to um, a restaurant or going to school or work or whatever like that. So there's going to be a lot of time on people's hands. So... Um, it's good to really figure out like what time you're going to wake up in the morning and, and have it be the same every day and not deterring from that um, schedule. You know what I mean? Because what could happen too, like if somebody's in their house all day, then they could end up sleeping way too much, you know, and then it just becomes a habit and then the days and their nights can get mixed up, which is even worse. Or it could be the other way where someone's not getting any sleep, you know. Um, because they ended up like sleeping like three days in a row and that's very unhealthy. You know, that's, that's, could be dangerous, you know, sleeping that much. But, um, yeah, that could happen too, where someone's just like trying to, you know, speed up the, the time and then just sleep literally like five days in a row or something like that. I mean, someone could die over that. Um, or it could be really dangerous where if somebody's like, you know, playing video games or whatever like that, and they're like glued, um, you know, playing video games, and then they forget to drink water, and it just becomes like, I don't know, guys. <laughs> it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. This is like some real stuff to talk about here. You know what I mean? We got to be prepared. So anyway, I'm going to share Kai's video. He's not in isolation anymore. But he was able, there's just certain things that he did which helped him. And I'm just, I'm encouraging anybody out there, okay? Even if you're with your family, even if you're like huddled up and you have a social network and you're like in lockdown in your house and you can't go anywhere else, but you feel like, I'm okay. You know, I have my mom here. You know, I have my brother. I have my sister and all that stuff. No, you can still have cabin fever, okay? So I would say every single person, you know, have a have something where they stick to it every day. They do not waver. So if you say you're going to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, you do it every day, 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then you wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And just like that routine, because that, that routine saves people anyway. Like, you know, work in general, you know, uh, it makes people happy sometimes, even though sometimes they may dread going to work. But like, you know, to wake up, you know, at 7 o'clock in the morning, and they have their routine where they fix their hair, they put on their makeup, you know, uh, they get in their car, they drive to work, and then they, you know, start at 9 o'clock. And then they have lunch the same exact day. I mean, same exact time. Sorry, guys. It's like 12 o'clock. And then they have lunch. 
And then after lunch, they go back to work. And then they go back to work. And then they're going home. And then when they're going home, they're like, yes, I get to get go home and watch some show that they want to watch. But that routine, it makes people feel like their life has meaning. Even if their job, they may not like. You know what I mean? So, yeah, routine is everything. So, anyway, guys, I am going to sleep. Y'all have a good night, okay? Bye.